Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for week seven of Build Your Stash and Craft. And so for this week's um, crafting, we purchased some stickers and a plastic ruler, a sanding block or sandpaper. I got the sanding block because my Dollar Tree did not have sandpaper, but um, I, I do kind of prefer sandpaper. And then we just got a flower book that did have some things that were smaller that we could stick on, you know, that we could cut out and put on a card or a tag or something like that. So um, that's what we got for this week. And the, the thing that we're going to, we're gonna make some different, we're gonna make a different project. And um, I'm gonna show you a bunch that I kind of came up with with the things that we have already so far made in the series. So um, we're gonna start with the ruler. And I have already started because um, it does take a while, you need to be patient. We are going to make our own tear ruler. Now I've got it done all the way from the start, all the way down to just like a couple of inches. And what I did was I am working on the um, centimeter side because I don't use centimeters, I use inches. So I wanted to have the ruler itself to use as a ruler and a straight line, but I wanted to also have a tear ruler. So if you use centimeters, then just go ahead and do it on the, on the inch side so that your centimeters will still be intact. But the way to do this is to take your pliers and do it carefully. Don't think it's gonna go super fast or you could break your ruler right in half. You also could great you know, break out great big chunks, you're gonna wind up with spots that are larger than others anyways. Like here's a pretty large spot um, because a few small spots broke together. And that happens and that's cool because it's a tear roller. You don't want it to all be perfect or the same. Um, but so you just take a pair of pliers and you just kind of pinch on the edge of your ruler. So you don't wanna, you don't wanna go way in there and then just kind of pinch and maybe, you know, kind of go back and forth a little bit like this way. And if you can see, it broke off this spot right here. And so then you wanna leave just a little bit between where you broke it and where you put your pliers on again and then just do that again. And to me, it, it works a little better to rock back and forth this way. And then if you think, hmm, that's not really big enough, and do make sure you clean the plastic off of your pliers between each little break um, so that you get a good hold on your ruler. And if you don't like how much came out, you can just kind of go in that same spot and do it again. I'm not gonna do it there because I like the way that that one looked. So we started out at 25 centimeters here. And so when we're, we're done, we can, oh, now see, I went ahead and kind of rocked it really hard this way. And that pulled me right into um, the piece that I had just broke off. So now I've got a bit of a longer one and we'll look it up close in just a second. So again, I'm gonna leave a little bit of a space. So my break stops right there at like, 26 and a quarter, and then I'm starting just past 26 and a half, that's centimeters. So there's just a little gap of flat ruler there. Sometimes that, um, it still breaks off just a little bit. And so there we go. That time it, it broke off enough to make a little point there. And you just do that all the way down. And, and again, like I said, take your time. That's the whole reason um, that I did so much of it before we get on here. Now I just kind of pulled up just a little bit to get it to, to get it to break because it, oh, because it didn't want to break and look at that really big piece I took out. So I don't like those pieces the best, um, but it is what it is. I'm not going to worry about it. This ruler's 12 inches long. I don't have to use that bit if I don't want to. Um, very rarely do I, um, break something that is that long. But even if it was in the middle, like I said, it, when you tear something by hand, it's not gonna tear exactly how you want it either. So 
you know, that's not going to, it's not going to really make a difference. Now, when you get to the end, be really careful. I don't want to break the end of my ruler off. And there we go. All right, so where did we start? We started at 25. So we started right here. And then, so that is the look of what we did just now. And so, and there is our whole tear ruler. So that is how you make your own tear ruler. You can also make it with acetate packaging like this. The heavier the acetate, the better. But you can just cut a flat piece. Oh, excuse me for bumping you. You want a nice flat piece of acetate, plastic of some sort that's kind of heavy. It can be any size that you want it to be. You just want a nice um, straight edge. And so, and then just, actually I'm going to trim this down just a little better because it still has a little bit of the fold on it from where it was folded. Okay, there we go. All right, so then I just take my scissors and just kind of nick at it like this. And like I said, the heavier the plastic, this one is a little bit thin. So I'm just going to just keep nicking. One little nick right next to the other until I get all the way to the other end. And you can make this, if you've got a long piece of acetate, you can make it as long as you want it. And if you have a short piece of acetate and you need to rip a long piece of paper, you just go ahead and move it um, up the paper as you go. Alrighty, so now, I don't know that you'll be able to see it very well, but we've got some little nicks on there. And what I'm gonna do in order to rip this paper is I'm gonna take my ruler, the straight side of my ruler, and I'm gonna put it right up next to the edge. Now this piece of acetate might be just a little bit too thin, but I'm gonna put it right on the edge. I don't have a permanent marker. We don't have one yet in our series, but when, when I get a permanent marker, I, what I'll do is I will draw on that edge for two reasons. Number one, then I can see where it is, so I slide my ruler right up to it. The edge of this is just right there. There's maybe an eighth of an inch between the, the solid part of my ruler and the edge of my acetate, so just a little bit. Um, but also I draw on them because they're very easy to lose because they're clear. So we're gonna hold this down, and when you pull on a tear ruler, whether it's store-bought or whatever, kind of pull at a bit of an angle like this, pull towards the ruler and down, and move your hand down your ruler as you go so that you're holding that acetate down really hard right in that spot where the paper is making contact. Okay, that's the end of my acetate. Ooh, I like that tear, actually. That's a really nice one. So I'm just going to move it down. Move it down. Kind of tuck it in there a little bit. Not really tuck it in, but just kind of make sure that it's under the piece I need to pick up. Just barely. And then I'm going to line this up right close to the edge. Hold it down nice and tightly. Pull this kind of at an angle. And there we go. So now this is, put it on here. A little hard to see. I don't have anything super dark. Yeah, that's too busy to even see it. But it does have a very nice tear there, if you can see that. So, and then here is the other side. I wonder if it would show up better on there. 
little bit, see? Really nice. So you get that straight line, but it looks torn. That's the, re that's the whole purpose of a tear ruler is to get that torn edge, but a lot of times paper has a grain to it. So if you pull it one way, it will rip straight, pretty much, and the other way, crooked. So see how straight this is? This is the way that the grain goes. Yes, it's kind of torn like that, but this way, it really came from all the way up here to down here. That's not a really nice straight line if you were trying to, let's say, put a backing on a card or something. Um, you know, a layer, you want it to be straight so that the next layer can go on top of it and you can still see the layer behind it. So that's what tear rulers are for. They really help you when you want to tear against the grain of your paper because here we go, we'll tear against the grain of the paper here. And again, pull your paper kind of at an angle towards the, towards your ruler. And there we go. Now I pulled this out from underneath of my paper. Um, and so that is the looks of our tear ruler that we made. But see how we started up this far over and that paper had torn down that far. That's why I got, there was so little left under there. That's why I pulled that out from under the ruler. I'm going to put that ruler right back on there. There. When you're tearing a piece of paper with a tear ruler, the easiest way to do it is the smallest piece that out of what you're tearing. If you're going to tear it right here, put your ruler right there to hold that down and hold it down nice and tight so you don't pull it out from underneath, but it gives you all of this to work with. If you wanted to tear it right here, if you put the ruler right there, then you're having to pick at this little teeny tiny piece of paper to try and pull it off, and it's not as easy. But if you were to take your tear ruler and put it there, hold it down nice and tightly, you've got all of this to work with. And that's why you, and it, and it doesn't matter whether this is the part you're looking for or this is the part you're looking for, put the ruler on the biggest part, if that makes sense. Okay, so now that we have a tear ruler, now we can tear pages and, you know, tear things so that we can layer up cards or whatever, and we can get a nice straight line, but yet it looks like it's been ripped, which is just, it just looks more organic is, is how that works. So a um, couple things about working with your books. So when you find something that you like and you're going to want to let's say we want to cut around this flower I'll look at the other side to make sure I'm not ruining anything on that side that I would have liked better rip it anyway or cut it anyways okay so now we have this flower we're going to want to glue this on something and this is shiny paper so shiny paper doesn't glue as well as matte paper and so that's what our sandpaper is for for right now you can use your sandpaper for lots of things but just take your sandpaper before you cut it out and rough up the side that you are going to put the glue on because that way the glue will stick into those roughened spots. You don't have to sand all of the picture off. You just want to roughen up the back side. And there we go. Now that was really easy because it was a nice square piece of paper. I had plenty to hold on to. I could go back and forth to actually get some grit on there. And now when I cut this out, it's going to be a whole lot easier to glue it down instead of having to sand it once it's cut out. Because you can you can put glue on it without it and it may hold, you know, a lot of times it will. Um, but if it's something that's important, you really don't want it to let loose. And depending on how strong your glue is, 
um, you just you don't want to take that chance that you're going to glue it down and because it's shiny the glue's not going to stick very well and then all of a sudden whatever it is you glued down falls off and this works for anything if you're um, using boxes like cake boxes and that type of thing they have the shiny outside and you're using those for your stencils or your stamps um, you should if you're going to glue to that shiny side you should rough it up a bit and before you glue it so and if you don't have um, a, you know any kind of a sanding block or sandpaper on the cardboard you can kind of rough it up with your scissors just kind of take your scissors and you know scrape it across your cardboard like this to go ahead and scrape some of that off so the glue's got a place to get in there grab the actual paper underneath that shine um that's harder to do on a book page you know you you take you have a good chance of maybe ripping right through the paper um and that's why the sandpaper works a whole lot nicer and actually that sanding block i I prefer sandpaper because if I want to get into the middle of some place, I can kind of roll it up and, you know, get into small spots. Um, but I do have to say that doing the back of this page with that sanding block, that was pretty nice. I don't normally use them. And that did work fairly easy. So I probably shouldn't have really taken the time to cut this whole thing out, but just really kind of wanted to... show you what I'm talking about here alrighty so there so we sanded that nice back of that just just sand it but now if we had to sand the back of this see like my my sanding paper is catching right here on this edge you know it could bend these over it could rip them off as you're going this way so that's why if you if you can try and remember always sand it before you cut it out and then you've got a nice spot to glue on the back so that's just another little tip so and then you know look for other things that you can do with your book and I don't know if I can give you the same example as what I already did as a sample so I should have kind of waited until I had you here before I finished this one but Okay, what I did was, there was a teapot right here, and I cut it off. All right, there is a little pot right here, so we'll use that little pot to show you another thing that you can do with your book. So this is a little pot. It could be a ball, it could be a flower, it could be anything. But I just want to show you something that you can do. To give yourself a little more dimension on your projects so let's say you wanted it to look like you were going to put some flowers in this pot okay so now we have this cute little pot now if I want to put some flowers in there what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna First off, I'm going to use one of my skewers, if I can figure out. Oh, here they are. I'm going to kind of try and poke a hole in here with a skewer to get it started. Because my scissors don't have a real sharp point on them. I'm just kind of getting a hole in there. And then you can take your scissors to make that just a little bit bigger. Just carefully poking the point of this skewer. Actually, I probably don't even need to use the scissors. Can you see what I'm doing here? Just poking it right along the line of the mouth of the vase there. I don't want to go all the way across to the outside edge because I don't want it to come apart. I just want to make a hole in it. 
or a bit of a line, I guess. There. Okay, so now we have this little part right here that we can tuck a flower down into and have a flower in our base. But this kind of flat. <coughs> so we want it to not be so flat before we put it on our project. I'm just going to take a little piece of fabric and I'm going to turn it upside down. And if I can find what I did with my ball tool, there it is. Take the ball tool that we got from the Dollar Tree and we want this part of the base all to puff up and then we want this part of the base right here to go backwards. So I'm going to turn this over and on something fairly soft, I'm just going to go around and around and around and just kind of go up to those edges and give it a little bit of a curl. Do the same thing here. I went around and around first because that kind of broke up the paper a little bit, kind of loosened those fibers. And now I'm just kind of pushing around those edges to kind of curl them in like we did when we curled the flowers. I'm going to do the same thing up here. Just going to kind of go back and forth and then push that. And if you wanted, you could do it in your hand like this to get that to kind of go that way. And then we want this to go back. So I'm going to, from the front side, I'm going to push that back like that. Or again, put on your hand like that. So now we have a shape to our little vase and we can take that and we can stick it on a piece of cardboard or something and glue just the outside edges and this top flap here. Put that right on to, see we're just gonna glue around the edges and when we do, that's gonna be puffed up. Can you see? And then you can stick your flower in there and it will look like a little vase with a flower in it. So I did do one here and I did it with the crinkle flowers and I made a couple extras. I rolled up a piece of paper, just took a strip of paper and just rolled it up, kind of twisted it up like this until it got skinny, but it has a little texture to it. And then I used green and brown paint and just put a little bit of paint on it, let it dry. And that's what I used for my flower stems. Um, I used just one little piece squished up to make a little bud. This is the one we made together the other day. And then I made these two to go with it before I thought about it. I had all the squares cut out into, you know, a little bit smaller as I went down. And then I squunched them all up and set them to dry and then went, oh no, I forgot to make them into circles. So this is the one we made with the circle. These ones were made with squares. I didn't even make them into circles. And then when I just put them together, I just offset them. I put the first one with the four corners out here. And then the next one, which was blue, I just turned that just a little bit so the corners are in between those corners. And I did that all the way in. I really like the way that that looks. I like how those petals come out there and they're kind of pointy. And see how domed up this is. I did it the same way, except I just did it on the fabric because it was really kind of too big to hold in my hand but that's domed up. I cut a little thing here, and then I just glued it down around the edges. So, and also, this was very faint, so I did use one of my little paint brushes that we got, and I mixed the paint with glue. Let's see, I didn't do the purple flowers because I thought I would show you that. Um, just one little, oh, that's way too much. Um, one little drop of paint, one little drop of Elmer's glue, or white glue, PVA glue, whatever you call it. 
like that. That thins the paint down. It makes it stick better. And it also um, makes it just a little bit kind of see-through. Not really, but I don't know how to say it. So all I did was I did like this with some red paint. And I did it with green also. And I went over top of all the red flowers and the green leaves. You don't have to be able to paint. All I did was just color it in. Just I just went on top of it. I, I didn't paint anything. It wasn't my design. I, I'm not a painter. And I don't know how to paint, but you can do that. I got a little bit too much right there, so I might just maybe push that back a little bit if I can. And if not, there we go. And there's one down here. So yeah, I'm just, there's just little, all you can see is just kind of little spots or something. So I'm just going over top of them just like it is there. And so there we go. See how you can see those so well? Now look at these two over here. So that's a lot prettier. And it does look a little bit painted. So, you know, that's kind of cool too. People will think that you really did paint that which actually you did paint it you just didn't you did it kind of like oh what do you call that remember paint by number so it's kind of like that it's kind of like paint by number just fill in wherever the flower already is and with the with the uh, pink ones here um because it was very shaded I mixed the paint with glue and then I used the paint all by itself in a few spots where it was darker just so I got a little bit of a darker color where they had it darker and actually I did the dark part first and then I did the glue part second. So that is what you can do. That's how you can add some color to something that you've got that you think needs to be more colorful. And, you you know, this is just a little, now I can just set this, you know, put a little easel on the back or something, put a little hole in the back and hang it up. It's just a little piece of art. And it's just little because it's just for a sample, but you can, you know, you can really go overboard with these. You know, you could do it on a bigger piece of card. And this is just cardboard, you know, and then put this one maybe here with some flowers sticking out of it. And maybe even puff it up a little bit by putting a wad of paper behind it that would hold it up even a little bit further away from um, away from your canvas there. So so that is a that is an idea of something you can do with your flower books and with the paint that we've already got and with our sandpaper and oh thank goodness I have some old water over here but I didn't have any water. And that's how you get things to stick. And that's how you get things to be dimensional. Like I said, you could do it with flowers. You can do it with anything that most things do have dimension. So you just kind of put some dimension where you think it's needed. So then here I just quickly did a little note card. And this is just a regular piece of our paper. I folded it in half. I folded it in half again and then made a card. Now I stuck it together. How do I stick it together? Because that's an important thing. Okay, so take your glue. And when you're going to stick it together, put a little bit of glue somewhere. And just a little bit, because you know it's going to dry up. So, but I'm so tempted to put just a touch of water in here. It's so thick. Oh, well, I'll find the lid when I clean up. Okay, so just a little tiny bit of glue and then you're going to take your card tap your finger on that glue and then tap it off a little bit it's going to just barely be there and just kind of tap it in the corners maybe tap a little bit along the bottom and the sides move a little quickly and then push it down basically it's just dry paint or I mean dry glue. You don't want it wet at all. You don't want to take those drips of glue and put it on your card or it will get very wet glue wrinkly. And since we don't have any stick glue, that is kind of a way to replicate stick glue, I guess you want to say, because it's very dry because you pretty much patted it all off and then you just pat it on in just little bits 
and it holds it together very nicely without making all of those crinkles. If you want crinkles, that's great too because they look nice. And then I just used our tear ruler to tear the dictionary page that we had colored the other day. And then one of the wipe off pages used our stamps, our hope and our circles, used one of the flowers that we made and one of the um, stickers that we got. And it just makes a nice little note card to write to somebody. Um, or even you can do this on a little bit of a bigger scale and make yourself a really cute little plaque to put somewhere. So, and a plaque doesn't have to be, you know, on wood or whatever. You know, you can make a plaque with a piece of cardboard. So, I even did a great big piece. I don't think that you guys saw that. I was going to use that. I even kind of laid out what I might like to do on a card. Um, But then I couldn't find where I had my older cards. Like, I had saved my Christmas cards, and I was going to do it on the front of a Christmas card. But I couldn't find it. So, but I was going to put a butterfly up there, tear a piece of dictionary paper there. Oh, and washi tape. Washi tape looks really cute if you put it on in just a few little bits. You know, like three bits or just maybe even one. And you don't have to use the whole width either. You can make it skinnier if you want to. So then, one thing that, another thing that we're going to just make together today is a book. I did get some things kind of ready, but I thought we'll do just a little quick, just a little quick notebook. So... Um, I don't know what I did with that piece of paper I had out there. Alrighty, so I just went ahead and I'm gonna do it this way. folded my paper in half. Let's get your get your corners together. I should do this where you can see it. Get your corners together. Come out to the middle, always to the middle. That helps you get a straighter fold. If you start at one end, your paper wants to shift. And so just give that a real good burnish. And then I just ripped it. You can cut it if you want to. I hate trying to cut in a fold. So then I'm gonna fold it in half this way. Make sure my corners are lined up, come out to the middle, and then go both ways. And if you have your paper burnished like that nicely, it should tear pretty much on that straight line. Get my corners lined up. And so this is just a little notepad. It's a notepad you could carry in your purse, keep on your desk to write your ideas. Um, I have one that I put quotes in because I love it. It's like, oh, I love that quote. And then I write them down and I lose them. So um, I really like it. I used to write them down and stick them in my Rolodex, um, which worked out really well too, but they're not as easy to read. If you put them in a little booklet or something, you can flip through it and see them versus pulling out all these little tiny pieces of paper. And there we go. And um trying to read them. So I have two pieces. This makes three pieces of paper. Although this one we glued together, so we can use that for something else. So I have seven here, four. All right, we'll have five in one and six in the other. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five. Yep, and there was four there and I put two in there. So there's six. Now, you can take your scissors and cut this off. Whenever you fold paper and put it together, each one that you put in sticks out just a little bit farther as you go. Um, because this is for me, and um, and it doesn't make much of a difference because there's not that much there. I am not going to do that. I'm going to leave them the way they are. I don't mind that look at all. And then I just took a piece of a paper bag, just a big full-size brown paper bag, and I just ripped it off. And when I did it, that was there. And I thought, you know what? I kind of like that, that that says that there. So I'm going to leave it. And... So then what we're going to do is we need to know how big does this cover. This is going to be my cover. So I am going to, I have one fold in there already where I kind of folded it in half. I'm going to move back just a little bit and put another fold in it. So that I actually have just a little bit of a spine. Because I have two signatures. If I had one signature, I would only need one fold. But with two signatures, it's better to have a little bit of a spine. And so that's what we've got, just a little tiny bit of a spine. 
So I'm going to put those there. I did kind of measure when I tore it to make sure it was just a little bit bigger than the book. Not much. And then I'm just going to put that in there and decide where do I want to... I think I want to... I don't really want much sticking out on that end. So I'm just going to kind of fold that back to right about the edge of my paper. And that's very crooked. I'm going to use my tear ruler to do it, and I'm going to try and make it just a little bit straighter than that, because I think that's crooked. Maybe not. That looks pretty good. Again, I'm going to pull it towards my ruler at an angle. There we go. Didn't get a very good tear here. I'm going to just go in and Rip that off where I don't like it. There we go. It still looks a little a little bit crooked. Oh, let's fold this out. That looks pretty good. All right, so now we have our two signatures that are going to go in here. And I thought maybe that I would make this so that it folds over like this. But I, I want this to show up. So I'm guessing not. So that one is there. That's probably... Now remember, because we have this fold in here, I can't just fold this straight down and go, that's where my neck, that's where I need to rip it, because then when we put that back, we would be ripped out here. So we need to make sure that you hold that spine up straight. That's how big, um, th that's where the tear needs to go. Just kind of looking to see if that looks about even it kind of does and again it's for me you can measure if you want to and make sure that it's all you know exact that works very well and we have a ruler to do that now but I usually just eyeball it alrighty so there we go that's gonna be a cute little book I'm gonna like that and how are we gonna put it together though we're gonna sew it but we don't have anything to sew it with we do we're going to, there's my dictionary. Okay. We're going to take our dictionary and open it up so that we have this nice dent there. And I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to use a skewer, but we also have this. Let's use this, maybe that will work well. And I'm gonna poke a hole in it, just maybe a half inch down from the top, poke a hole, somewhere in the middle, poke a hole, and again, you can measure this, and about a half an inch up from the bottom. Okay, then I'm going to just kind of make that hole a little bit bigger. Since we don't have a needle, we're gonna need a bit of a decent sized hole, there we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line these up. I didn't do it all at the same time because that's an awful lot of pages to go through. But now that I'm poked through all of these, I'm going to poke through the next one so that my holes are in the same spot. They don't have to be. They're two different signatures. But... Um, When you sew through the back of your spine, if you're not going to cover it, which we are actually, so it won't matter, um, if you're not going to cover it, then if your holes are in the same place, that's kind of nice. Okay, so there we go. Now we have our two signatures. And I am going to just line these holes up. I have one line here, let me see. Let me just grab a pen, it's a plain old pen. I'm gonna show you what we've got here. Okay. There's one of our, there's one side of the spine. And there's the other side. So that's our spine right there. So we're going to want to put some holes in there. 
I'm gonna put one pretty much just inside the one line. And I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna just make a line right across, just like that. So I know I need to put two holes in there. And what did I do with my little pokey? And if you don't have this, I was gonna use a skewer. So you don't have to have this. I'm just gonna kinda hold this where it's got a place where it can push through. Okay, so now we have a hole there, there, and there, and do the same thing over here. just don't want those holes to run into each other. So now how are we going to put this in here? Okay, you can use a piece of your wire um, paper clips, but I just have a um, twisty tie here. So, and if you have like a twisty tie off of a bread bag, um, I use those all the time and just um, peel the paper off of them. I had one, but I can't find what I did with it. Thought, ah, there it is. I found it. That twisty tie came off of some electronic my husband got. So, but we're just going to kind of peel the paper off of there. It's really not a paper, it's more of a, and you know what? I'm going to hold that with my pliers. Kind of pull it off. There we go. Okay, because a thinner wire works better. And that one would have worked just fine. And even a paper clip, you can bend a paper clip. They're just hard to bend. Okay, so we're just gonna bend it in half. Then we're gonna take some of our little twine. I always forget, there we go. Mm. Okay, so we're gonna take some of this. We want it to be three times longer than then the book, then which way we're sewing. So there's one, two, three. It's okay to have a little extra. You don't want, really want to run out. Okay, and we're just gonna take, open up our wire. So now it's like V-shaped. Stick that in there and push it back together. I don't twist it because I use them over and over and once you twist it, you can't untwist it. And we definitely need it two times here. So um, so then we're just gonna take our string, we're gonna go through this hole and then go through that hole. And I lied, <laughs> we're going through the middle. This is a three hole pamphlet stitch. So you go through the middle, you can go up or down after that and whichever side you start on, if you want your string to be on the outside, you start on the outside. If you want your strings to be on the inside, you start on the inside. So you're going to go down, make sure that you hold on to that. And then, like I said, you can go bottom or top. It doesn't make any difference. We're going to go through that hole. And then through this hole. One of my wires kind of bent over, so you do have to bend that back. There we go. So go through this hole. Do that. Now, this part where you have to be very careful because you don't want to catch this thread right here, but we're going to go back through that same hole again. And I'm going to lift my paper up just a little bit, just so I can see that hole. I don't want to stick my wire through that hole, because otherwise, or I don't want to stick my wire through that thread. Otherwise, all this thread is going to have to pull through that. It's lost. Okay, so then we went, so we went down through the middle, came back up through the bottom, went back down through the middle, 
we're going to come back up through the top. Oops. <laughs> okay, so. This is the thing. Um, I forgot to go through the hole again, which is all fine and dandy. But when I flipped it over, I went to the wrong hole. There's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole. I went over there instead of over here. So I now need to take that back out again. But you, I'm going to take the wire off it and pull it out. Okay, and I am going to, I have to pull it out. Don't have a choice because it's just in the wrong hole. Hang on to this one. All right, let's put the wire back on and try this again. Okay, so through the middle, making sure that we go through the correct, or, or through the top, or the bottom, whichever one that is actually the top. Um, okay, make sure you stay in line which with whichever signature you chose to do first. Okay, so I'm just gonna, whoops, my wire bent. There we go. And you know, the thing is sometimes it's a little more fiddly. If you don't have all the newest crafting tools to do your crafting, it may be a little bit more fiddly but you can still do it. And that's the thing. You don't have to have everything that everybody has, else has to do it. And if you can't afford it, I'm gonna pull my string over a little bit so I can get my wire through there. Um, you know, if you can't afford it and you try and go out and buy it anyways, it's not gonna be enjoyable because now you're using something that you spent maybe grocery money on or, or whatever, clothes money or something like that, or just money that you wanted to have saved. Okay, so we're going back down through the middle. So up through the middle, down through the top. Or down through the middle, come back up through the top. Go back down through the middle, now come back up through the bottom. Make sure you stay in the right hole. If you only have one hole, you don't have to worry about it. But when you have two sets, you got to stay on the right side. It's like driving on the wrong side of the road. Okay, make sure that my wires are together. And... When you're crafting and you you make something with nothing, and it's okay that my wire came off, <coughs> excuse me, instead of spending a whole bunch of money, it's so much more fulfilling anyways. So there we go. So now once you come back up into the center, we're going to go under the one that's already completely in. So that will... Make sure that you keep everything pulled tight before you tie it. Okay, so we pulled on that one. And pull this one. <coughs> Excuse me. Sometimes it takes a second to figure out which one you need to pull. So that one goes up here. And then that one goes there. There we go, nice and tight. So the reason we went under that one is because then that holds that in the middle. So you can tie it up. And then you're going to do the second signature exactly the same way. Because we're already at 49 minutes. <clears throat> I don't have time to put the second one in, but I am going to. I will put it in there and I'll show it to you next week. But then the other thing I just wanted to show you is that now you've got your cute little book. You can take a piece of your fabric. And I thought that I would take a piece of this 
and wrap it around there like that. So it needs to be cut right about here. <clears throat> and I thought I'd cut up the part that says double. I'll leave the little flame there. No, I think I'm going to put it right up to the life. And then just glue that on. For that one, I would use the tacky glue. Trying to make sure I have the right side up. A lot of fabrics are very hard to tell which side is the right side and which one isn't. If you absolutely can't tell, well, then nobody else is going to be able to tell either, so don't worry about it. And I could have dyed this with some coffee or some tea. Um, I could have dyed it with wet paint or wet markers, just like we did our paper and we did our other fabric. But I thought white would just be nice. Oh, and then for the back, oh, it's even got a cut in it from some other time. I'm going to cut it right above those little, there's kind of a little fleur de lis there. Alrighty. Normally I would probably spread this out better, but I'm kind of running out of time. And because I'm just doing it for me, it's okay. Oh, I can't do that anyways. I'm going to leave that off just like that. It's going to dry. Oh, well. Or am I just going to have, I guess I'm just going to have one signature instead of two. So there we go. The signature that I put in is in the back. So maybe I'll put a little pocket in the front. And then that pocket I can put a few things in since this is big enough to hold a little bit more than that. But So that's just a cute little book that you can just have hanging around. You can use it for addresses for your friends or whatever you want to use it for. But, you know, these are just like I was just kind of playing around with all the different things that we had. Because I was making up a little bit of storage for things so that I could start you know keep this all in some kind of order and um so i just wanted to show you that even though we haven't got a whole lot already we've made some things already and how can we use that one just doesn't want to stay shut right now but i will get that burnished down so that it does but how can we use the things and what other kind of things can we make i really like my piece i don't know if i showed i showed you this but i don't know if i showed you there's my stamp. And someone said you can put um, game pieces on the back of your cardboards for your stamping, and you can. And that really does work great. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I do like the, um, I like the masking tape because it folds down so that it's easier for me to store instead of having that, that piece on the back. But it does work really great. So um, that is another really good tip. So, but these are just some of the things that you can do with what we already have. And for next week, we are going to get, let me see here. All right, from the Dollar Tree, we are going to get some plastic, they're poly index dividers, so plastic dividers and some makeup sponges and some utility knife and a little cutting board. If they don't have this type of a cutting board, um, you can get a regular kitchen type cutting board too. Actually, that's what I used to have and had a little handle on the top. I really liked it, but they didn't have any of those this time, so I wound up getting this one. But So we're going to need the cutting board, the knives, the sponges, and the plastic backing. So we are. that's four items. That's $5. Um, so we'll still have $2.50 to put in our bank. We had $17.25. 
So we now have $19.75 left in our bank. And this is what we're going to use for next week. I hope that you enjoyed the few different things that I was able to show you this week. I really do like playing around with these things. And, you know, this one right here, um, you know, it just, it's got all the um, opportunities in the world to become whatever I want it to be. So I can put stickers on there. I can stamp on it. I can color on it. I can leave it just like it is. You know, it's just a really fun thing to do. And, um even some beads. We made our own beads. We could put some beads on the back. I forgot about that. So thank you very much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.